In this video, we're going to look at the basic parts of the circle and circle definitions. So a chord is a segment whose endpoints lie on a circle. So we have chord AB here, which we could show with this notation. Point A and point B are both on the circle, so this segment right here would be considered a chord. Now, if I'm traveling along the circumference of the circle, along the outside of the circle, we would call that an arc. So this right here is arc BC, okay? And we could show it with this notation right here. Instead of using the little segment notation right here, we'd use a slightly curved line to show we're discussing an arc. Now, a side note, after talking about chords, I want to make sure this is clear. You've heard the definition of diameter before. This is not a new word to you. Um, but I want you to know that it's often defined as a chord that passes through the center of the circle because we can see chord AB is in fact a chord. It's a segment that has endpoints on the circle itself, just like we defined in the last slide, but also it passes through the center, and that's exactly what a diameter is. And you might also see it sometimes defined as the longest possible chord of a circle, and I think that makes sense because, you know, the further a chord is to that outside of a circle, the shorter it's going to be. And as we kind of work our way towards the middle of the circle, the longer those chords get. So if we're talking about a diameter like diameter AB, that's going to be the longest possible chord of a circle. But let's talk more about arcs. Now, what we can have is we can have both minor arcs and major arcs. A minor arc is kind of an arc that's less than a semicircle. So we can see right here we have arc DE. But you might be saying, okay, well, if I'm going to um, notate arc DE with this notation, then what if I want to refer to this part of the circle? What if I want to refer to this part that I'm highlighting out here, the, this greater, um, or what we would call a major arc over here? Well, in that case, what you'd do is you'd have to um, reference it with three points. For example, if I want to refer to this arc that's bolded right here, the purple part right here would be arc FGH. But if, say, I wanted to just refer to the red part right here, then for that, we could just call that part, we could call that arc FG. So we have the minor arc FG and the major arc FHG. Now, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So here is central angle IJK, J being the center of the circle, and IJ and JK being radii of the circle, or radiuses of the circle. So if you have an angle that's made up with two radiuses meeting at the center of the circle, that's called a central angle. But we also have inscribed angles, and an inscribed angle is an angle that doesn't have its, its um, vertex at the center of the circle, but it has its vertex on the edge of the circle. And it's also made up of two chords. So if you remember back, we defined chord a couple of slides ago, but the chords in this case would be chord LM and chord MN. Those two chords that meet at point N on the circle make up inscribed angle LMN. A secant is a line, array, or a segment that contains a chord. Okay, I'm actually going to edit out segment. A secant is a line or ray that contains a chord. So we have line QR. If I only wanted to refer to this part of it, then I could call it ray QR, okay, with that notation. Or um, I could back up, and if I only wanted to refer to this part of it right here, in that case, we could refer to it as ray R Q, okay? Um, but that's basically a secant. Note a chord is when it's just a segment, but if it extends past in the form of a ray or a line, uh, we call it a secant and not just a chord. So a tangent would be a line, ray, or a segment that's in the same plane of the circle but intersects the circle in only one point. So notice these secant lines or these secant rays this one intersected the circle at two points, Q and R, but our tangent lines intersect the circle at only one point. So know the difference between a secant and a tangent there. And this is really important. If you were to draw a tangent line, that tangent line 
at what we call the point of tangency, remember how that tangent line intersects the circle at only one point, where the tangent line intersects the radius at the point of tangency, that's going to be perpendicular, and we're going to explore that a little bit more later. But just know that this radius will be perpendicular to the tangent line at that point of tangency. So let's get a little practice. Um, let's just practice naming some of these different things. So radius is something we didn't really cover in this video, but you should know what a radius is. So we have, in this case, we could have radius JK. Oh, and let me, let me back up for a second. I would encourage you to pause the video and try to answer all of these questions on your own and then hit play and see if you got them right. So our radius is going to be radius JK. And then to name a diameter, remember our diameter is the longest possible chord of the circle. So I could call it MH or HM and I would use this notation to show it. A tangent line in this case, there's only one tangent line. I could refer to it a few different ways, but our tangent line is going to be line NL. Okay, this line right here is our tangent line because it only intersects the circle at point M. A point N is our point of tangency. Now, for these, this next one, there's a lot of different ways you can name a minor arc. But if I wanted to reference a specific minor arc, let's say I want to reference this little part on the circumference of the circle, then I could call that, I could call that right there, I could call that arc GH. But there's a lot of different arcs I could have. Like, if you know, let me change colors real quick. If I want to reference that minor arc right there, then that minor arc right there could be called arc HK. But just know that for it to be a minor arc, it has to be less than half the circle, less than a semicircle. Okay? Now, if we wanted to name a major arc, let me, let me come up here and erase what we have. If we wanted to name a major arc, remember the major arcs, are more than half the circle and travel all the way around. So you got to be really careful here. Let's say I want to refer to this major arc that I've highlighted in red. Well, in that case, what we'd have to do is we'd have to refer to that major arc by three letters. So I couldn't just call it arc GH as earlier because that would refer to this little part up here. If I want to refer to the whole thing, I could call it maybe arc GMH or I could call it arc GM, or excuse me, arc G. K H. Either of those would, th both of those notations would describe the same arc here. And there's other major arcs you could write. Um, you're not necessarily wrong if you didn't come up with the same example as me, but that's the example that I kind of gave right here. Now, on this next slide, we've got a few more practices. So once again, I would encourage you to pause the video, try to answer these on your own, and then hit play. But next, we're going to name an inscribed angle. And if you remember, an inscribed angle is an angle that has its vertex on the circle itself, and that's, uh, that's the sides of the angle, the rays, are made up of chords of the circle. So I look right here, I really only see one that we could have, unless I'm missing one, but we have this right here. And so I would refer to that inscribed angle as arc GHM, excuse me, angle GHM, because H is on the circle and HG is a chord of the circle and HM is a chord of the circle. Then if I wanted to name a central angle, a central angle is an angle that has a radius at the center of the circle. Excuse me. A central angle is an angle that has its vertex at the center of the circle. I'm tripping over my words. And so right here, it looks like the central angle would be angle HJK. And then naming a chord, there's, it looks like there's only one chord that we could write. And let me erase all my highlights to alleviate confusion. But it looks like our only chord is going to be this segment right here. It, uh, actually, we have two chords. I could also have this segment right here. Because we have chord, and I'm trying to be color-coded here. We have chord GH, which is the segment that has endpoints on the circle. So GH right here is a chord. But we also have the longest possible chord, which is a diameter. Or in other words, the chord that goes through the center of the circle. And that chord would be chord HM. Okay. And then lastly, name a secant line. And so our secant line is actually going to be just this chord right here, but extended. I could have a secant ray that maybe went that way forever, but if I included this part of it, kind of the whole line that goes on indefinitely, our secant line is going to be line GH. So this first lesson is really nothing but definitions. 
Just maybe practice naming and identifying these parts of a circle and you should be fine.